Welcome to Nothing But Jesus with Jacob. Today we'll be talking about the love of God. If you're already here, feel free to like and comment on the video. It means so much. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. And I hope that God will bless you through this video and that you will begin to understand the love of God that is so deep and so vast for you. I want to make a disclaimer before this video. God's love is for everyone. Jesus went to the cross to save the world, not condemn it. In John 3, 16 to 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him what we are going to be talking about today applies to believers but for the unbelievers that might be clicking on this video I speak to you that God has an unconditional and endless love for you that regardless of actions he loves you so much but he also calls each and every one of us to repent and believe in him all of us have sinned and done wrong in our life, whether it was lying or cheating or stealing, whatever it may be in our life, lusting, whatever it is, we have all sinned in one way or another and are imperfect. Therefore, we need to repent, turn away from our sin, and therefore turn to God. Regardless of any sin that we committed, we must repent and turn back to God. And in doing that, we must believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and believe that God has the power to save us. And this will bring salvation into our life. Romans 10. 10, 9 to 10 says because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved the love of God is available for every single human being and God is waiting with open arms for the person who would choose to believe in his one and only son even if you did not believe in God before clicking on this video the love of God is still available for you he still loves you with an unconditional love and after you've committed your life to God to believe and follow after him, you can experience that love in such a great and deep way. In John 1, 12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Once you truly believe and trust God with your life, you are now a child of God. And when you're his child, you get to experience the love of a father. You get to experience the love that God has for you. It's available for every single person, but to those who believe are given the right Right to become children of God and therefore experience it and I want you to experience the love of God I want you to follow God for yourself and understand how much and see how much he loves you I grew up thinking that I knew what love was but it wasn't until I finally gave up on following after sin and started following after God and chasing and seeking after him that I started to realize I didn't know what love was I was chasing after things in my life that I thought were going to give me love, whether it was people or things in my life, materialistic things that I was chasing after that I thought would bring love into my life and they never did. But what I found is that when you come to God, there's an endless love that he has for you that you can only experience when you're in relationship with the creator of the universe. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to go and seek after God. And if you haven't already, give your heart to Jesus Christ because he loves you so much much and he has such great love for you that I want you to experience for yourself because I know what the emptiness of the world feels like but now I know what the love of God feels like. If you are in Christ Jesus this is the amazing reassurance and love that God has for you. In Romans 8 31 39 it says what then shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against this he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also with him graciously give us all things who shall bring any charge against God's elect it is God who justifies who is to condemn Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised who is at the right hand of God who indeed is interceding for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we are being killed all the day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god in christ jesus our lord 
There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because God loves us so much, he gave us his one and only son. And now that he has graciously given his only son, there is no one that can condemn us. There is no one that can come against us because if he is for us, who can be against us? Who can triumph over us? We have been given the mark as more than conquerors because of him who loved us. Because God the Father loved us so much and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God loved us so much. He, he came to earth humbled himself in obedience that he might die on a cross that we might live and experience and have the love of God inside of us. It's an amazing thing to understand that a God that is so vast that there's no end to that there's no beginning or end to the Alpha and Omega this incredible God that we are able to have the privilege to serve would humble himself to the point of coming to earth living with us to be Emmanuel God with us and to take our sins upon that cross. Once you understand how great and vast God is not that we can even fully come close to understanding the depths of God but if we could get a glimpse of how great God is we would understand how much love he has for us to send his son to die for us and the amazing promise that we get from God is that nothing can separate us from the love of God not anything in all of creation all that has been created cannot separate us from the love of God what an incredible promise we are given by God to show how much love he truly has for each and every one of us us. In the story of the prodigal son, the father receives the son back with open arms and not only that, but he goes to the extent of throwing a party and a feast for him. He even doesn't even recount the sins of the son that he's committed against the father. He doesn't bring it up. He doesn't blame the son or anything. He receives him with open arms, gives him a ring and a robe and throws a party and a feast for him. He doesn't remind him of his sin. He pardons his sin and spreads it as far as the east to the west. God's not remembering our sin, but he's pouring out his love and his grace and his mercy and peace upon those who are his children. In 1 Corinthians 13, 5, it talks about love and it says it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. God is not waving your wrongdoings and your sins over your head. That's what the enemy is trying to do, accuse you of all the things you've done wrong. What God is doing, he's looking to love you in the best way possible. And he's working out everything for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God is love, which means it is his nature and character to love. He cannot help but love his children because he's such a perfect almighty father and he's so incredible. That means he loves his children to such a high degree that we could never comprehend to the fullness. So we can only get a glimpse and a small little bit of the love that God is because that's just who he is. The greatest gift that God gives us is his one and only son. See, he's not a God that just sits up there and talks, 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 but he's a God who talks and puts his, his talk into action. He proves it for us and he proves his love in this. Romans 5 eight. he shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A lot of us question if God ever loves us, if God even cares about us. And this is what I have to say about that. When we question if God truly loves us, think about this. While we were sinners, while we were following at the passions of our flesh and following and being self-seeking, following after sin, God still loves us, which means that God loved us while we were out there following after sin. So there is no question in my mind that he loves you right now. Do not let anybody tell you that God does not love you. Don't let any human being tell you that. Don't let any demonic forces and spirits tell you that you're not loved. And certainly do not let yourself tell you you're not loved. For years of my life, I battled with severe depression and even suicide. So for these things, I always told myself that I would never be loved, that there, I was incapable of being loved by anybody. But God flipped the tables on what I was thinking and what I was telling myself. To this day, I'm still learning about God's love for me. I barely scratched the surface of understanding the depths of the love that God has for me. God is endless and you'll never finish searching out the depths of who he is and you'll never find the end of his love. See, for me, as I was saying before, I've struggled with saying that, you know, no one could ever possibly love someone like me and you might be in the same similar situation where you feel like there's no possible possible way God could love you for all the things that you've done. There's no possible way that he could love me for all my sin. And God's saying, you know what? I saw you while you were a sinner and I still sent my one and only son to die for you. 
Jesus Christ went to the cross knowing that you would live years of your life following after the passions of your flesh. God saw you at your lowest and he still loved you. God's going to see you at your highest and he's still going to love you. Regardless of the bad things you do or the good things you do, his love for you is steady and is always being poured out for you. So know this, whatever the world tells you, do not listen to the world. Do not listen to those people in your life telling you that you cannot be loved. Don't listen to your own mind condemning you, but know this, that if God has justified you, who can condemn you? If God loves you, who can ever in all of creation separate you from the love of Christ? This is an ongoing lesson and journey that I've been on for even myself because I've been trying to learn and by faith accept the words of God that says that I am loved. And you yourself have to go up regardless of what the world tells you, regardless of what you tell yourself or how you feel to put facts over feelings, to say, you know what? God says that he loves me. God says that he would give his only son for me. Therefore, I am loved so deeply by God and I will live even though I don't feel loved, even though I feel feel like I've done so much wrong but the fact is that I'm loved by God so put the facts over the feelings and start by faith by faith accept the word of God that you are loved there's a wise man who hears the word and doesn't and he builds his house on solid ground because he hears the word of God that says he's loved and because of that he goes and loves God with all his heart soul and mind and loves his neighbor as himself but there's one who hears that he's loved and it doesn't stretch his faith out to believe that he's loved and therefore the storms come and they blows his faith away but what we need to do is by faith receive and put into action and know that we are loved by God there's a reason why the two great greatest commandments have to deal with love. There's a reason why God wants you to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength because God wants to pour his love out for you. God wants to love you so much and engulf you in that love. And when you have that love of God inside of you, you pouring out your love for him and that way you can pour out your love for those people around you. This is why it's so important to stretch your faith to understand that God loves you. That way you can go out and love the people around you. Regardless of what you've been through, you must stretch your faith out to believe that what God has said is true. It may be hard to understand and it may be hard to stretch your faith to believe that God loves you. It's very hard and it's been hard for me to understand that I'm loved by God endlessly. And it's going to be hard for a lot of you guys out there to stretch your faith. But I encourage you to go do it because God loves you so very much. He loves you with a love that never ceases and a mercy that never ends. It is new every morning. God bless you and have a wonderful day.